prior experience in the securities industry as a registered representative selling securities, uh, stocks, bonds, mutual funds. We have, we have no comment. Is there any questions? Jerry Campora is a mortgage industry professional and part of my media team. In similar fashion to me, he finds himself in places where dishonest people don't want him to be, and he discovered the crimes of his former profession in post hoc revelations. I'll show you more of a discussion we had last year in New York City, but for now, just know that when he went to file a document recently with the Suffolk County Clerk of Courts, uh, Judith Pascal, uh, that document was, in our estimation, uh, wrongfully denied after he had signed his affidavit noting that uh, New York Supreme Court Judge Joseph Barnetti was allowing banking fraud in his courtroom relative to foreclosure and thus violating his oath of office, among other things. Now, Mr. Campora filed it in Georgia, so it's still a public record. But the question remains why Ms. Pascal refused to file it in New York and why they called law enforcement on him. As you'll soon see from footage in Boston, Massachusetts and in Rockville, New Jersey, I simply don't tolerate these types of shenanigans. I could show you more uh, of my actions recording supposedly private figures who operate in the public in New Hampshire, uh, at Martha's Vineyard, in Madison, Wisconsin, and on and on and on. But you get the point. Public is public. You run a clerk of courts. You're in a public place. We're going to run video on you when you break the law. That's it. Good evening, sir. Uh, you're here with KingCast.net and Mortgage Movies. And I'm here with Jerry Campora, uh, who is an industry professional regarding mortgages and investments. And uh, this gentleman has had a hard time trying to file something with the uh, Suffolk County Clerk of Courts, Judith Pascal. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that, sir? I understand you were able to file this document elsewhere, but not with her office. What happened? Well, I walked into the office to try to uh, record a document. It was merely an, a, an affidavit of acceptance. I sent out a, uh, a notice to uh, a judge where I was pointing out uh, many of the things that he went ahead and did in my case, and uh, basically with an affidavit just stating that he received my document, he had a duty to respond to it, and he had never responded to it. So I needed to go on record with the fact that anybody that's colluding with a bank uh, to try to injure me, I need to record that. It's my, you know, uh, I want it as a matter of public record. Uh, basically, they refused my document. Uh, they wouldn't give me a response as to why they weren't recording it. Uh, the clerk, Nikki, there said to me that uh, it was a it was unrecordable and that I should take it up with her supervisor. Um, I asked for her name. She wouldn't give me her name. Um, you know, then I snapped a photograph of her because I was in a public office and I couldn't get anything public out of these people. Right, and, they, and, and, right, and Mr. Kippur, let me tell you uh, just quickly, as you may know, I was a journalist before I went to law school, and I have videoed in uh, registries of deeds and clerks of courts, uh, offices, often, and it should not be an issue. And you were threatened with arrest, I understand. The police came, the sheriffs came. What happened? Oh, yeah, when I asked the woman to identify herself and she refused, I snapped a photograph of her in a public office. She had no uh, reason to think that she was in a private place. And uh, I ended up that the uh, deputy sheriff walked in and he asked what happened. And I told him that they just committed a federal crime. So he proceeded to defend the woman uh, in, in regards to that I invaded her privacy. Mr. Russo, yes. please, can you escort this gentleman out, please? He's sir. Taping. sir, first of all, I read the rules, okay? The SJC rules, I videotaped trials here, I videotaped for years here. No, that's not what I'm about. I'm just about documenting what this man is doing. That's all. Fast. Okay, I, I already, excuse me, I'm the, okay. I'm the office manager here, that's and fine. I have the report of what happened the last time. Well, you, I, I just want you to cut, okay, I just want you to cut, well, you're not supposed to have a video of what happened. That's the whole point no, of this. The, no, you see, the whole point is all incorrect. Right. They called the head of security. He tried to have me thrown out. All right, but. This guy. This guy right here. How you doing? Listen. I'm doing fine. How you doing? Stop. Right now, stop. Let me have this thing. Do I'll it go again. down to the clerk. Okay. You happy now? I said please stop. Try to throw me out again? Huh? Big guy? They sell off the note, and then they make me an unwitting, undisclosed party. Uh, 
third party to an investment contract. Then they want to pursue me and then want to collect on a contract that I was an undisclosed party to. And then after they've sold the note anywhere between five and 25 times the face amount of the note, they are then trying to collect something from me when in fact they owe me the proceeds of that sale of that note between five and 25 what they're talking about is they'll tell you that notes are allowed to be sold and yeah so what that notes are allowed to be sold what about the contract that i was induced by fraud to sign when in fact there was not any loan there was no loan given to me. There was no consideration given by them. Nobody is damaged. The person that is initiating the lawsuit, they are not damaged. The person that originated the loan, in which in my case is Homestar Mortgage Services, they are not damaged. They sold the note. And when I left the closing, they had the original that they could then now place into the trust. Which they don't place into the trust, that's the problem. And, and the problem is, is that it doesn't even go in the trust. They say it's going into the trust, but they never end up putting them in the trust. They ended up destroying them. And then ultimately, what do you have? You have a trust and investors that invested in this trust and they invested in air. They were told they were investing in loans. What, would, what did they invest in? They invested in a trust that doesn't even contain the loans inside of that trust that they invested in. I'm oh, sorry, can you please turn that off? You do not have my permission to film or record this. This is uh, Mr. Right. Christopher King, he's a well, famous journalist. That's, that's great, right. but yeah. he doesn't have my permission to film or record this. Well, let me understand that because we're here on state business, correct? Excuse me, one minute. All right. Mr. Rebel, this is our chief of staff. This is Tom Ocasio. Tom, what can we do for you? Uh, um, and I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name? Christopher King with KingCast.net. Okay, you don't have permission to film in here, so... Okay, but what I'm asking for is clarification on that, because uh, as a First Amendment attorney, I've tried cases like this, so I don't understand. We're here on state business. What, and, but our and staff, staff, staff member is not giving you permission to film, so... I don't want to be If filmed. there's an issue that we can help you with, we'd be delighted to try to help. Well, I mean, I'm not saying I won't honor your request. Okay, uh, even though I believe the law states otherwise, as a state employee, all right? No, it doesn't so, actually. Okay, well, what statute are you referring to? Is there some decision law that I can put you in touch with our counsel's office? But we're definitely not in a position to give you. What is what okay, is the well, issue? I'm not here to argue that point. Yeah, I'm yeah, just here yeah, to make sure this man gets his documents. Yeah. What documents are you referring to? I've sent mails. I've had three registered mails return receipt to DMV go missing. Well, the so as your constituent sits there getting no substantial help, uh, I got a quick message from the chief of staff here. Uh, don't get nervous, all right, because you shook my hand so fast it was as if you thought the black was going to rub off. Listen, the next time you have an issue with me, if you promise you're going to give me legal counsel as to your proposition of law, then give it to me. Furthermore, if you honestly think that I can't video in there, you know, get your hand on my face and just go ahead and call the police, okay?